It was a sweltering evening in Goldenfield when Lizzie Parker went into labor, pushing all night with the help of her doula, Catherine Smith, and Lizzie's husband, Stu, by her side. It was a long and painful six hours before the delivery of their firstborn, a beautiful baby girl with a full head of red hair and bright brown eyes. The couple cooed and instantly fell in love with their new child. They had about three and a half minutes of joy before a wave of pain washed over Lizzie and Medulla noted that this was another contraction. Another baby was on the way. While the firstborn continues to cry hysterically in her new manger, this delivery seemed longer and more grueling than any delivery that the small town doula had seen before. With the help of Catherine, Lizzie birthed a smaller, more frail baby, born still and gray. As Catherine moved away to soothe the firstborn, Lizzie and Stu wept over their stillborn child. They mourned and prayed to their god, Lathander, also known as the Morning Lord, to give their baby new life. A pipe dream. Miracles never happen in this small farming town. Suddenly, while Lizzie held her baby against her chest, they noted a small glow beginning to form seemingly from her core. Slowly, a beautiful golden light began to wash over their secondborn. Her skin became lively, red curls grew shinier, her cheeks cherub, and her chest began to rise and fall with each breath. She opened her eyes, and a bright golden glow seemed to emanate from them. They sit there and admire their healthy baby girl. They barely register the wails of their firstborn when suddenly the crickets stopped chirping and the wind grew still. Shadows slithered across the room and the candles died out as if an unknown being had smothered them, one by one. Everything was so silent, even the babe stopped shrieking. As quickly as the silence and shadows came, they departed, leaving Stu and Lizzie clutching their secondborn, and Catherine standing at the foot of the bed with the firstborn in her arms. Noticing that the babe was still quiet, the doula peered down, but what she carried there was not the same as it once was. No, where the babe had had beautiful brown irises, now there was smoldering gold, and the whites of her eyes had turned black as night. Catherine's eyes grew large, her back stiff, as she began to mumble a prayer. Stu couldn't quite hear her words, but he knew she was praying for forgiveness as tears dropped from her eyes, and she quickly left the farmhouse with the baby. Stu's heart began to pound, and without a second glance at his wife and second-born, he rushed after the doula. She didn't go far as Stu found her just outside at the water trough around back, with the baby's head submerged. He whipped his child from her grasp, lifting her from the cold, unclean water, and pushed Catherine to the ground. How dare you, he yelled. That baby's been cursed by the devil and needs to be drowned to save its soul before it's too late, she cried out. Stu looked down at his firstborn and saw what Catherine had seen, but held the babe tight to his chest as he yelled at the doula to leave and never return. Stu walked slowly to his wife while ensuring the baby had not succumbed to any harm. Once he had confirmed her safety, Stu walked back into the farmhouse where Lizzie and him mutually agreed that this was still their child and that they would continue to raise her as if nothing had changed. They knew angels had been at work that night and dutifully named the babes Kylan as the firstborn and Finriel for the second. They grew up normal, beautiful twins with a minor physical difference. Then, at the age of six, Kai's horns began to come in. This created a divide between the girls as Kai was continuously mocked, feared, and bullied by not only the children, but the adults in town. Finn stood up for her sister any moment she could. However, after anger started to grow within the town, Lizzie and Stu sat the girls down. They explained that Kai was different and beautiful, but sometimes those differences need to be hidden. Throughout their lives, Finn continued to protect and care for Kai, despite the growing resentment that Kai seemed to have, even to Finn, they loved, showing it in different ways. While Kai turned sullen and bitter, Finn spread herself thin, helping as much as she could throughout the town. She did this, hoping to spread joy and happiness, as well as to speak positively about the sister she loved to anyone who would listen. One person she helped, and eventually became friends with, was the town cobbler, Miss Hadley. Her husband had went missing, and despite the town's efforts, he could not be found. With a little extra guidance from her god and some begging to Kai, Finn was able to bring the husband home. While the town praised Finn, they completely ignored Kai's efforts, and thus Kai began to be even more reluctant to help anyone within Goldenfield. 
Finriel continued her efforts, becoming somewhat of a folk hero, while Kai turned distant, training in the way of the monk. During this time, at the age of 16 on Finn's travels, she came across a baby gray squirrel who seemed to have fallen out of a high tree. She nursed him back to health and dubbed him Solme, meaning my son, after her god, Lathander. Finn continued to care for Kai, but quietly. When Kai's shoes became worn, Finn would purchase new ones and leave them in Kai's bag, as if they had always been there. She knows that Kai does not admit to liking the help, but will continue to care for her beloved sister, no matter what. One day, soon after their 19th birthday, Finriel came home after a day's work to a note on her pillow. Kai had left to seek training in Neverwinter. The note was simple. She was gone, and Finn was not to follow. However, Finn had other plans. She needed to protect her sister no matter the cost, and so she said a tearful goodbye to her parents, packed up, and headed to Neverwinter to find Kai and maybe their next great adventure. Thank you so much for watching Thin Reel's video today. If you want to see more Dungeons & Dragons character backstories, hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!